up guys winter kills here coming at you guys with another test hand video uh, i usually like to follow up the deck profile sometimes with test hands yesterday we did an invoked mech knight test hand video it was a pretty good one so if you want to check that out if you're interested in playing some invoked mech knights um you can go ahead and check that out that there in the top right of the video should be something for you to click on if you want to watch afterwards you want to watch right now it is up to you um but we're going to be doing mermail following up the mermail profile uploaded a few days ago which if you haven't seen the mermail profile i'll leave a link to that uh, up in the top right as well so you can click on that if you want to see the profile first and then come watch this video and uh also if you want to uh, wait to the end of the video it should be something annotated at the end of the video for you to click on uh to be able to watch that as well so we'll probably be following this up at some point with some duels uh or whatever or maybe some combos and things of that nature and maybe getting you guys that fish oriented mermail deck profile featuring the deep sea king uh Coelican, because i know some people want to see that profile uh separate from this profile which does not feature that card but i uh would be more than happy to get that profile out to you guys so uh we'll go ahead and get started but real fast i want to mention our sponsor at imperium duelist uh who just came out with a brand new formula of sleeves like i'm using here on the main deck uh, really nice non effect sleeves. They've also got new uh, formula of their effect sleeves. This is the older version, but um, still really, really nice sleeves. And this playmat, the uh, Millennium playmat, I believe they only got a few left on their site. If you like the way this mat looks, it's got this beautiful black and gold coloring to it, with of course the Millennium Eye right there. Uh, so if you're interested in picking a mat up like this, uh, or you know, other mats, because they do have tons of different options on their website, uh, two player cloth playmats. Uh, you can check them out down in the description below, and you can use that discount code to save 10% off your entire order and help support me in the process. So, we'll go ahead and shuffle up here, and uh, we'll go ahead and do some testing. Alright, so I've pile shuffled real quick, wanted to do a quick uh, shuffle before we get started. So let's go ahead and cut the deck now and draw into our first hand. Osea, Pike, Megalo, Gund, and a copy of Teus. Um... Now, one thing I want to mention is I was talking earlier about doing that fish mail build, um, or maybe I haven't mentioned it yet, but uh, I, wanna, I want to do a, a profile of Mermail featuring the Deep Sea King Coelacanth, um, because there are some really, really cool and fun plays you can do with it. Um, I wanted to kind of do that test hand video today as this one, but I'm still waiting on some cards that I need uh, in the mail to be able to fully build that profile. Uh, in real life, uh, so we're gonna have to wait on that at least for the time being um, So we'll start this hand is going first because despite how this hand looks we can still resolve undyne and prince with these given cards here That's why I like playing gun and pike at multiple copies in this build So we'll get started by summoning megalo discarding pike and gun and then we'll revive the pike activate pike's effect and discard the osea Got to keep that Teus in our hand, uh, and then we'll add a level 3 water from our deck to our hand, and we're going to add Undyne. Now we'll normal summon the Undyne, sending Dragoons, adding Prince, and adding a copy of Controller. Just like that. Now, to be fair, we actually don't need to send Dragoons. Let's actually just send Prince and add Controller. Let's just do it this way and see how this sort of plays out. And now we'll link the Undyne away and the megalo for an enemy because now we can resolve taeus dragoons as well uh reviving the atlantean prince will use its effect to send dragoons add dragoons and of course megalo the go-to only thing that would make this hand better if we drew seca's light if we had like an extra card in our hand that would be seca's light uh now we'll summon taeus by discarding dragoons and we'll add a copy of Prince off the Dragoons, and a copy of... We've already resolved Gund. Um, but I don't think that should make too big of a difference. Now, we could add Mander here, but we're locked into Waters anyway, so Mander's not going to be uh, the best option. Let's just add the, the Mander, just to get that out of our deck and into the grave. I figure that just makes sense. All right, so we'll add Mander just like that and now we gonna, we're gonna want to link away the anemone and the the prince into a mistar boy since we have that's our only option we cannot go into lacia with an enemy since she is a cybers now we'll summon megalo by discarding the pike and not the pike but the 
uh, Mander and the Prince, and then we'll use that Pike effect, or the Pike, not, I'm getting so many names mixed up, the Prince effect uh, to revive the Dragoons. Now, one thing we can do here is we can make, actually, I was going to go for Dweller here, but we can make Bahamut Shark now. And we can use an extender in our deck that we have not accessed yet, and some of you may or may not know what that is already. But we'll summon or the Bahamut Shark, detaching the Dragoons to summon out the Totally Awesome into this other zone. We'll use Dragoon's effect to search the other free extender in our deck, and that's Lapis Dragon. So we'll special summon that to our field. And now we have a couple options. Um, actually, you know what? To be totally honest, we don't even need to add the Lapis Dragon. That is a bad play on my part. Um, we're well past five waters, so I mean, I probably could have set up a Moon Glacier play there, but probably not, uh, since I'm, you know, I'm not the greatest at playing this deck. I'm just kind of trash, Chief. It's no problem. All right, now we will link away these two. And you know what? Like, I'm, I was debating, like, if we add the Lapis Dragon, we could link these two away for Lacey over here and keep the Bahamut Shark, but I don't think the Shark really adds too much to the field. Um, so we'll just link away these two for Alacia, and we'll put that there, and then we'll overlay these two into a copy of Abyss Gaios, just like that. So, not a bad ending field, considering we did not open Teus, and we, or we did not open, uh, Diva, we did not open Prince, none of that stuff. We did not open Undyne, we were all able to do that simply off of Pike and opening Teus, um, obviously... Megalo, Gund, Pike, Teus. Just those cards, this good old Mermail cards getting us uh, to this play that you see right here. And we have an interruption with Alacia. We have an interruption here. We also have a negate here. And of course, we have the best card in our entire deck in our hand to be able to use next turn to do absolutely, well, you guessed it, nothing. So, uh, But controllers of love hate wouldn't be able to make this board without this engine, so definitely cannot deny that. So I'm going to shuffle up here, and we'll go ahead and do another test hand. So that last hand is an example of why I originally wanted to try playing three pike in the main deck. Um, it, maybe I'll go two pike, one turge, because I don't know if... Uh, three pike would be necessary but i have no idea and i'm not sure what i would cut either way so let's go ahead and do another test stand here starting off with Seca's light osia prince teus and our sixth card or our fifth card is dragoons um so we could do this hand going first as well um there's some pretty cool plays we could pull off here with osia um if like like, if we didn't open these cards, these were other waters per se. There are some really cool plays we could make just with Osea and Teus. Set up uh, Miss Starboy, totally awesome, etc. A, a basic board, uh, if you will. So, let's go ahead and just start with the classic Teus Dragoons. I mean, uh, Teus Dragoons is Teus Dragoons at the end of the day. It's, it's a really good play. Um, there's really nothing else to say about it. Um, that's why I like this build, though, a bit better than previous builds, because it doesn't feel as reliant on opening Teus Dragoon. Sometimes you actually open better, in some cases, in some, not all, uh, when you don't open those cards, because the play line is a bit, I don't know, easier to follow. I don't want to say easier, but it just feels like it kind of flows better. Um, but then again, maybe I'm just over-exaggerating. Uh, but let's start with the Diva del Mare Profondo. Uh, and let's either go for the infantry for the extra extension for the prince, um, or we just go straight for prince, but I'm going to be a little extra, and I'm going to go for the infantry. Um, if your opponent, if you suspect your opponent has tons of hand traps, I wouldn't even go for the diva. I would just go for the prince, because diva is a hand trap magnet, so we'll use the prince send dragoons, and, uh, add dragoons, and add megalo. Um, and if I was going to cut uh, a spot for uh, the Osea, or not the Osea, but for the um, the Turge, I probably would drop Hild because I feel like Hild's the least useful. But like sometimes summoning this off of Osea and then using Manor to make this a level 4 to be able to overlay into like a Dweller or a Shark, you can detach this to summon out something else from your hand and use it as an extra extender anyway. So maybe I drop Dine, I don't know, because I feel like Dine doesn't come in handy that much. And I feel like Hild and everybody else kind of does a bit more work at the end of the day. So now that we've resolved that, let's go ahead and use Sekka's Light to draw into two more cards, Aqua Spirit and Prince. 
those are pretty good cards. Let's use the Sackers Light other effect here to put back the Osea and draw into another card. If we draw into Gund here, this is going to be a pretty good turn. Now, we probably d we don't really have to use an enemy with this turn uh, because there's just real no need to. We've got everything resolved that we wanted to. We've got D.Va on board. You know, we resolve infantry for Prince's effect. We don't really need to go into it. Any other extender we want to go into is mainly going to be off of something like... Um, I don't really know what's the uh, what's the word of the card. Uh, the White Ore Monokeros, which we're going to do right now, actually. So we're going to link these two away into Tatsunoko. Not linking, we're synchroing. What is wrong with me? My brain is fried. This is like the first thing I'm doing in the day right now. So apologize if I'm a little fog brain. So let's synchro these into uh, a Monoceros. And again, one of the main reasons why I love Tatsunoko is that it can get a card like Pike out of your hand into the grave only for you to just revive off Monokeros and then follow up using that effect. Uh, and from here, we could discard uh, our Dragoons uh, to search any Sea Serpent. Uh, we could grab Lapis Dragon. Moon Glacia is a bit out of the question. Now, see, like, some people will call me crazy, and I know some people already, and you know, in Orcus builds, they've dropped Moon Glacia, or maybe some haven't. I'm not entirely sure. I don't keep up with too many Orcus builds, but I've thought about dropping Moon Glacia sometimes because you really sometimes have to go really far out of your way to set up Moon Glacia. And again, I know that sounds blasphemous from a Mermail player, but um, again, I don't know if that's something I'm actually going to do. It's just something I've thought about doing. Um, so let's use Pike here, and we'll discard the Dragoons. No, we'll discard the Prince, and then we'll search a level 3 water. We'll add Gund, the Gunde, and then we'll use Prince to revive a Dragoons, just like that. So now, as it stands, uh, we have access to a rank 4 play. Um, we could link these two for a, um, hmm. What could, what, what could we link for right now? I was going to say, like, we have this gun in our hand that we just searched. Um, I mean, granted, this could be Dine uh, if we resolve the chain links correctly. Um, if we go... Actually, no, that wouldn't work, I don't think. Because uh, if this goes 2-1, this resolves, we add the Dine, and then this would resolve summoning, and that would miss timing. So maybe that's... Maybe I'll cut Dine, just because Dine can miss timing sometimes. So... Um, Actually, no, let's not add Gun. let's add Arborea. Why would we add the uh, Gun when we could add the Arborea, the level 3 tuner extender? So yeah, let's summon a copy of Miss Starboy. Now, I'm going Miss Starboy first because we might be able to follow up and link again afterwards. So here we can make a copy of Bahamut Shark. Uh, and let's do that. Yeah, make Bahamut Shark. Detaching Dragoons. Summoning the Totally Awesome. Just like this. Just like that. Boom, boom, boom. Now, what we also could do here, we get to add another Sea Serpent. Keep in mind, we still have a Dragoon Surge in our hands. So that, or we still have a, a ability to Surge Dragoons. Let's just add the Infantry here. Now, this is probably where I would have wanted to maybe keep the uh the gun in our hands but i'm gonna scrap the gun for now i'm just gonna stick with what i've got here and i'm going to summon alacia now so that's why i went into the mistar boy first because i figured we might be able to link off into something else now we'll special summon the arborea and then special summon the aqua spear by banishing something in our graveyard we'll just banish the tatsunoko since we won't be needing that anymore. And then we'll synchro the Aqua Spirit and the uh, the Arborea into F.A. Dawn Dragster. And then we'll summon Megalo by discarding the Dragoons and the Marksman. Uh, and then we'll add a copy of Lapis Dragon here. And then we'll special Lapis Dragon, linking away the Alacia and the Lapis Dragon for another copy of Alacia. And then over these two... Uh, we will make a... Oh, we also... Yeah, we already used our Dragoon Search. Okay, I was going to say if we get a Dragoon Search. But then we will make this right here. So that was a really big overextension. I mean, we did have to link a lot of things off. But keep in mind, if 
if these if this or this gets destroyed we can recycle a lot of the cards we just used back into the deck and we have a pop off uh Alacia. so we technically have one two three four interruptions here and a search of a Teus. so we discard i almost put my uh, graveyard face down because i thought it was my deck discard the infantry pop a card add Teus. and you know what technically we don't have to add Teus here. One thing we could add is a copy of Gund. So hypothetically, we discard and this gets destroyed. And we send, we send, let's see what we have left in our deck. We send infantry to pop a card. We could send another infantry to blow up another card on a separate chain. And then use the effect of the uh, Lacia to summon this. Use this to discard, to revive. Any Mermel monster in our graveyard. Now, if we had already detached off of Gaios, we could revive that. But let's say we revive the Lacia again, and then we use Pike Effect to search a level 3 water, like Undyne for our normal sum next turn. Um, Toad dies, we can recycle the Mistar Boy back to our extra deck or a Lacia. Um, tons of things we can do. So, very solid and productive board there with some of the cool plays. Uh, we didn't even use an enemy there. Now, keep in mind, we did open up access to Teus Dragoons. Um, but we used some other really cool cards in the process. Uh, that Tatsunoko play into Monoceros is one of my favorite plays to do with this new build. So, keep that in mind. So, I'm going to shuffle up here and we'll go ahead and do another test hand. Alright, the deck has been pile shuffled. and shuffle a little bit more here and uh, see what we can draw into. Now, here we go. We're going to draw Triple Sekka's Light and Gen X Controller and Undyne in the same hand. No, I'm just kidding. That would, that honestly wouldn't be too bad. I mean, it depends, it depends, but... All right, so we're drawing Pike, Infantry, Prince, Megalo, Launcher. Um, I think with the last two hands we did, we're going first, so let's switch it up a bit and go second here. Six card is Gunned, and that makes a huge difference, believe it or not. Uh, so we'll start with Prince, activating Prince's effect. Hopefully that goes through, unless they've got a board of 400,000 negates, and then we're just going to scoop it up anyways, and then it won't matter. But we'll add Dragoons, and we'll add a copy of Moulin Glacia here. Now, I'm adding Moulin Glacia just because I really don't know what else to add. Maybe we could add a second copy of Infantry if we were trying to break a board, or we could add Marksman to pop back row if we needed to. Um, but I'm going to go with Moulin Glacier here because I don't think I've set up a Moulin Glacier as of yet. And I feel like I'm probably obliged to do so. So let's summon our Megalo now by discarding the classic Pike Gund combo. One of my favorites. Absolutely gorgeous. Using the Pike effect to discard the Dragoons. And then we'll add a level 3 water from our deck to our hand. And I'm going to go with, you guessed it, the Crusadia Arborea. Now, um, also actually, one thing we could do is hmm huh i'm trying to think like maybe we could have added diva here instead of the moulin glacia but that doesn't really add too much i'm not gonna do that we're not gonna do that mm -hmm. all right so we ditch that and we also get a search of a sea serpent here so let's add another copy of megalo uh where is it right there yeah so actually if yeah my, my corrections were right. So if we would have added Diva instead of this Mulan, we could link uh, possibly the Prince and the Pike away, um, or the any combination of these, any two of uh, these monsters here for an enemy, uh, and then summon this Megalo by ditching the Launcher and the Infantry, and then use an enemy to revive the, uh, the Infantry and normal summon the Diva. Um, but I'll hold back just a little bit. Uh, so we can actually do this play here uh, and drop the Moulin Glacia. So let's summon this. And now, actually, we could make an enemy here as well. Um, let's make an enemy. Yeah, let's make an enemy. I don't see why we why we wouldn't want to make an enemy here. Uh, being locked into waters going second really doesn't hurt too much because some of your best uh, OTK cards are water cards. So let's summon the Moulin. We'll drop that no problem onto the field. And then we'll summon uh, the Megalo by ditching the infantry and the launcher. We'll pop a card on their side of the field. And then we'll use the anemone here to revive the Gund. And then we'll use launcher to revive itself, just like that. And then synchro all of these away into white or a whale. So I guess we didn't even need uh, the Arborea. That was a bit of a miscalculation on my behalf. So instead of adding the Arborea, let's change up our target for un Gen X Undyne because that would make a bit more sense uh, going uh, into our next turn. So 
uh, were able to blow up a card on their field. Um, this could also have been probably like a, a marksman as well. Uh, we were able to drop Moulin Glacia, and uh, we're able to blow up all attack position monsters they control, and we're able to attack up to twice, uh, twice on monsters and inflict piercing damage. One thing we could also do is possibly link into a um, a Alacia. And one thing I was also thinking about doing with this extra deck was playing one number 38. And for the longest time I was, but decided to drop it. I mean, I guess I could drop the Emerald for it, but sometimes you have this combination here. So you could, if you were playing number 38, make number 38 right here um, or right here where it'd have to go, I guess. Uh, so you can protect your Moulin Glacia and not having to worry about losing your next battle phase. And for next turn, we're drawing White Stingray, which is actually a pretty good draw, um, if you ask me. It's just a decent extender uh, based on whatever card we can get off of the Undyne. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty good play. I mean, going second, it's it's just sort of break break the board, um, which I mean isn't that hard to do with Mermel. You can definitely break boards pretty easy. Well, I mean, technically here we couldn't make number 38 because it's not a water, but I mean, still. Uh, ideally, uh, in a perfect world, our opponent is uh, dead and they can't clear our board. Um, and even if we do uh, like lose our battle phase next turn, we have Whale and we possibly could have linked into Alacia, which our cards are going to have to worry about getting rid of. Uh, not through destruction, because if they d do destroy them in any way, shape, or form, we get... Uh, basically just free cards back so at the expense of them wasting resources so yeah i'm gonna shuffle up here real quick and we'll go ahead and do uh, another test hand all right deck is shuffled let's go ahead and draw into another hand here and see what we got pike arborea marksman megalo and aqua spirit let's match the amount of going first hands we did with the going second hand and we draw a copy of dragoons um hmm so let's see how we could possibly play this out. Um, we could definitely, we can definitely do an anemone play here, I think. Uh, let's start with Pike discarding Dragoons, and then we'll add a copy of, let's see, we could add Gund, we could add Osea. Let's add Gund, yeah, let's add Gund. And then off the Dragoons, let's add Prince, just like that. And now we'll summon Megalo by discarding not the gun. We'll keep the gun in the hand because we could possibly use that later. We'll discard the Prince and we'll discard the Marksman. So if they do have a set backer on their side of the field, we can destroy that. Uh, then we'll use the uh, Prince to revive the Dragoons. Um, now from here, we can link away these two and do a copy of Anemone. And then use Anemone's effect to revive the Prince. And activate Prince's effect here to send Dragoons add dragoons and we'll also add a copy of megalo here uh, because we do want to take advantage of that gun that we have in our hand to revive that um megalo that's in our graveyard um so definitely want to do that now we'll link away the anemone and the prince like i often find myself doing i usually link away it and whatever target it revives depending on what else i have in my hand now here we'll summon the arborea and synchro into monokeros and then Monokeros effect will activate and bring that pike right back to the field as just a free level 4. We've already used the pike, but why not just get out on the board as sort of an extra extender to work with. Now from here, we could make a Dweller. Um, I was going to say, we could make a Digusto Emerald. We probably could have made an Emerald earlier in the turn if we wanted to, but that's the one thing I still need to sort of figure out with this extra deck is, like, I do like Emerald here, but sometimes if you make Emerald, you have nothing to sort of link him away with because everything in the extra deck requires waters or fish or sea serpents or aquas, which obviously Emerald is not. Um, so something I'm still kind of working on. Now, one thing we could do, though, is go ahead and summon the spirit banishing the actually no i don't want to banish the arborea because that's actually a target we have to revive off of alacia or not alacia but uh the anemone at some point when we recycle that um so now we can make either dweller or we could make a bahamut shark or we could make number 37 if you were playing number 37 spider hope uh, hope woven spider shark um, that's also a viable option, but again, maybe, maybe I end up cutting Digusta Emerald for that to keep the extra deck more water oriented, um, because if we were doing that, we'd have a very clear way at OTKing right now. So let's just say for the sake of this video, I am playing the number 37, uh, this is in German, so I don't know how, <laughs> if you guys can see that or not, but just quick flex, just a quick one. 
Um, but yeah, we'll go into number 37, uh, Hope Woven, which basically allows us to detach and all monsters in our opponent controls lose a thousand attack. And I believe this is destroyed by Cardifact. We can just summon any water monster in our grave or any monster. Um, I would read it and check, but I actually cannot read German, uh, believe it or not. Uh, but now we'll go ahead and summon this Megalo, discarding these two. And then we'll do uh, Gun Chain Link 2 and then Dragoons Chain Link uh, 1. Add any Sea Serpent from our deck to our hand. Um, and since we do not have the requirements for a uh, Moulin Glacia, we could add a uh, Lapis Dragon to summon to attribute to attack twice for extra damage. But I'm going to just add a card so we have a follow up for next turn. And that card is going to be the Atlantean Prince. Um, just like that. And then if we wanted to, uh, if we didn't secure a game, we could overlay into a Gaios, just like that. Um, and then we could link into a Lacia also, but I really don't think we need to do that. I mean, let's say we detach to drop everything by a thousand, and we're swinging in with a lot of damage. Probably wouldn't make Gaios until after the battle phase, obviously, because that would prevent this Megalo from attacking, so keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty productive turn there, also going second. So yeah, let's go ahead and shuffle up the deck, reset, and go for one more test hand. Deck has been shuffled, let's cut the deck real quick and draw into our opening hand. Teus, White Stingray, Infantry, Controller, and Sekka's Light. Um, I kind of want to challenge myself here. Let's go, let's go first. Uh, I don't really call it a challenge, but let's, let's work with less cards, I guess. But we do have Sekka's Light to sort of help with that. And we'll draw into Gund and a copy of Osea. So we'll use the other effect of Sekka's Light immediately. Put this controller back into the deck and let's hope, let's just hope and hope, pray to Poseidon. We do not draw that controller again because if that happens and video, then I just don't know what to do. I really just don't know what to do. Uh, so let's cut the deck, and we draw into Marksman. All right, so thank God for that. Um, so now let's go ahead and summon the Teus by discarding the Osea, and then we'll use Pike or Teus' effect to grab Pike. I'm getting a bit of my, ahead of myself. So we'll add Pike. We'll normal Pike, discard the Gund, and summon out the Osea, and then off of the... Pike will add that level 3 Arborea, that tuner, just like that. Um, one thing we could add also, I guess, would be uh, the Dine. We could add Abyss Dine off of that, and that would summon itself out, because I don't think that would miss timing, uh, because the only thing we're activating is the Gund to revive the Osea. And so that would go chain link two, chain link one, um, because they're they can be activated in that sequence. So Osea would be revived. Then we add Dine, and then we can summon Dine, and then Dine can summon the Gund. Hopefully, I did that correctly. Uh, but now we have a lot of monsters on our field, and we can't really use the Osea. So I mean, is that really 100% worth it? Um, I mean, I guess we could link these two away into Mastarboy. Um, just to give ourselves a room, or we can make Alacia. But let's go with the Mistar Boy. Now we'll use Osea targeting this, summoning Mander, and summoning Hild. So we'll get the Hild out of the deck, like that. Using uh, the Mermail engine here to great advantage. No Dragoons, no Prince, no Diva, no nothing to be found here. Um, now, I guess we could have left the Pike on board and linked away the Dine instead, so we have that level 4 there. So I think that makes a bit more sense. Um, so now what we can do here is overlay into a copy of Bahamut Shark. And we'd also have to be mindful of where we summon this exactly. Um, so zone placement does matter quite a bit, so let's not mess with that. Let's just summon uh, this here and say we put... Uh, the pike or whatever over here. I think that would be fine if we change the ordering like that. I don't think it make too big a difference. And if it does, oh well. Um, but like, I think it's. I think this is solvable uh, just by placing things better earlier on. So we'll summon the uh, totally awesome off the Bahamut shark just like that. And now we can link away the Mistar boy and the Teus away uh, for an Alacia, just like that. And now we can use the Mander in our graveyard to boost these up by one, making them level four. And then we can overlay into Digusto Emerald here, detaching the Hild, 
or the Osea. Let's detach the Osea, because uh, there's nothing in our hand to, you know, put back, or revive. Um, so let's put back the Bastar Boy, let's put back the Teus, and let's put back the Diva. Or not the Diva, the Gund, rather. And we'll shuffle and shuffle and shuffle, put this back to our extra deck, just like that. And then we will cut the deck and draw a card, and we draw into Launcher, which is actually pretty neat. Now, we haven't used an enemy here, but I don't think we really want to. I mean, because we can summon this by discarding this, and then we can revive this and do really not much else. So that's not really entirely worth it. But um, we have four cards in our hand. We have two interruptions, technically. We just recycled a lot of our stuff and drew an extra card. So not a bad field um, for going first. Very conservative field. Um... There is a bit more we could do. We could have done some more stuff with the White Stingray. We just didn't really need to with this particular hand uh, because we opened up some cool plays with Pike and Dine and things like that. Um, and uh, and Osea as well. That's why I love Osea in here. Maybe I'll play more Osea. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll drop the Hild or the Dine uh, or something because I, I kind of want to try and play a Turge. Um, maybe I'll cut the Aqua Spirit for a Turge um, and just call it there. But then again, Aqua Spirit is pretty free sometimes because you don't need to have like a gun to set it up or something like that. So I don't know. But yeah, that's going to be it for this test hand. Uh, just to give you guys uh, some food for thought, help those out that uh, want to learn how the play style of the deck works, especially with this most current build. I think this build is less reliant uh, so on Teus Dragoons and Dragoons and Prince and stuff like that. And there's definitely tons of plays that can be made without those cards and it all comes from the the pike engine and the mermail engine uh more so than the atlantean engine which i like which i think there's it's nice that there's like a nice balance using an enemy and things like that to our advantage so hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did be sure to leave a like um join the discord check out imperium duelist uh follow me on twitch as well to watch me uh stream this deck live uh, on ygo pro uh, and things like that. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, Winter Kill signing out. We'll see you guys in the next one.